What's going on, folks? Once again, I'm Nev from Nev's Tack Bits, otherwise known as your friendly neighborhood basement dweller. But don't worry, ma'am, I am from the internet. And being from the internet, I'm a guy that can tell you about routers and computers. And today I want to be talking about this ThinkStation P340. This is uh, one of the newest ones from Lenovo. It's one of the mid sizes, so you can get it into lots of nice places. As the kernel will show you here on the front, we got the power, we got a micro, or sorry, an SD card location, we got headset and microphone, micro S, micro SD, USB C, and four front USB panels. Now, the red numbering thing really takes me back to the way that IBM used to number their systems. They used to have the numbers in red on the front. I hadn't seen Lenovo doing this so much, but still, it's a, it's a callback. But the honeycomb uh, air system up here looks really nice, and you can definitely tell it apart from the older units. Right, Colonel? On the back, I'm really surprised to see a serial connection, but no RGB, no VGA. So we have have three display connectors but no HDMI. I'm almost a little bit disappointed that there only has uh, four USBs in the back. You definitely want to be expanding that. And then of course you get your Ethernet. Not much else going on. Of course this is low profile. Let's have a look on the inside now. So standard disassembly of this unit is very easy. And a quick look on the inside will show you that we uh, have lots of room to expand the video cards. But I almost wonder if the power supply is going to have enough to be able to float those. It's almost as if the motherboard was built for uh, something bigger. I have a hard time believing that you'll be able to pull off much with two video cards and this kind of a power supply. Anyways, in order to get further into this unit, we gotta pop the front off like so. I'll give you a look at the honeycomb. And then next up, we have to... This thing flips out in a very certain way. I think you gotta... No, that's... It's right here. You have to hit this switch right here. And then that flips up. You can have a good look at the inside. It seems like the whole thing just kind of drops off. As you can see, we got four places for RAM. Interestingly enough, they decided to put uh, the main RAM in the second slot over. And yeah, not a whole lot going on. You got your M.2 card over here. Giant heatsink. You get another spot for a second one. One, two, three, four. SATA hooker operators. And you know what? That's about all that I see in this unit. Um, the power supply is very specific. And it plugs in here. Oh, wow. They actually give you... I think that... I'm pretty sure that's power for a powerful video card, huh? All right. Now, as much as I love running with the top off, let's get the top back on this sweet lady and uh, throw some tests and some benchmarks at it and see what we can get away with with a system this sweet. So, of course, we got an i5, 16 gigabytes of RAM and like 12 cores. Look at all those cores. It's beautiful. Okay, next up, benchmark with Passmark, benchmark 10. Of course, I'll come on back when it gets to the video portion. Here we got DirectX 9 test, rocking out at uh, 23 frames per second, which is about what I was expecting. Here we got DirectX 10, we're going at about 5 frames per second. We could do better, but still not bad. And here we have DirectX 10 at 22 frames per second. Not so bad, those jellyfish ain't looking so jittery. Pretty good tilts. And of course, here we got DirectX 12 firing at... Uh, 15 frames per second not bad not bad all right so a score of 2500 almost 600 that's pretty standard and good for the price that we paid for this unit of course they're a little extra expensive now because of all the semi-capacitors shortages yay next up of course we're trying out some fortnite and it automatically set everything to medium which isn't too bad for this card oh man i'm not gonna lie that's pretty smooth that bus looks pretty good Getting some minimum lag, operating about 25 frames per second. All right, a little bit choppy. I wonder if I can follow this guy down. Don't run. Square up with me, bro. Square up. Oh, he got me. He got me. Oh, <laughs> Oh, uh, that's just how she goes. It's the nuance of these Battle Royale games, right? Anyways, I didn't like how she was handling. It was pretty good that we had it in... Uh, it's pretty good that we had it in medium mode, but it didn't handle very well. So, um, performance mode is probably the best that we're going to get out of this thing. But still, you can't sneeze at that. That's not bad at all. Now, if only I could get a true video card, that'd make me a happy boy. 
Here we got Grand Theft Auto playing admirably in uh, a very small screen setting. I definitely wouldn't recommend this for your everyday gamer, but uh, it'll get you by in a pinch if you really got to have your GTA fix. Next up, let's try a half decent video card or maybe a 10% decent um, GeForce, GeForce 1030. Mmm, now you're playing with power. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Mmm. Oh yeah, that definitely looks much nicer now that I got the 1030 in there. So this is definitely a very capable CPU. You definitely want a good GPU if you can find one, right? Good luck with that. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's it from me. Neff from Neff's Tech Bits. It's a good system for the money. Take care of each other, folks. Like and subscribe if you like this stuff. As always, take care of each other.